Hi and welcome to this video on deploying SRM 8.3 into vSphere 7.0. So once we've downloaded our SRM 8.3 ISO, we need to mount it to a drive and import it as an OVF into your environment, as I'm doing now. So we need to give it a name and select our compute resource that we're going to deploy it to. Okay. Once you specified that, we'll just uh, go next, we'll accept the license agreement, and then we'll choose our configuration option. So I'm just going to do the two CPU for my lab. For the storage, I just want to thin provision this in the lab, but you might have a corporate policy for making this thick provision, so you would want to specify that here. And then any storage policies as well. For me, the default network's fine. I'm just going to put in the root password. You'll want to store these somewhere safe as well. Admin password is what we use to log into the appliances management interface with, which we will have to do after deployment. And make sure you put a, uh, a valid NTP server or multiple servers into your uh, NTP servers option here. Host name of the appliance. Fully qualified domain name is always best. And then the database password, you probably won't need to use this, but uh, obviously good idea to make a note in case something goes wrong. I'm um, going to use a static IP address, but before that we have to specify our gateway. So let's put that in here. And then our domain name and our search path. Okay, and then the uh, the DNS server. Make sure you put the the IP address and host name into your uh, DNS server, which we've specified here, uh, so it can be resolved. And then I'm just going to use a slash twenty four. So yeah, just review all the settings here before you continue, and then the appliance will start deploying by itself. Now, just take a few minutes to deploy, so uh, I'll pause the video there, but we're back. Now, once it has deployed, power it on, and we will need to wait a few more minutes to that, for that to finish powering on. I like to watch the console, actually, just to see when the uh, when the deployment and configuration is finished. And you know when it's finished because it uh, gives you the URL to log into for the initial setup. Okay, and now the deployment is finished, we just log into the management interface in the web browser and those uh, on that IP address and port which was specified in the console there. And don't forget the HTTPS prefix. And then we log in with the admin account that we created earlier. Once we've done that, we click configure appliance and we need to specify the uh, vCenter server appliance FQDN which we're pairing this SRM server with, and then a, a credential. You can use more granular permissions here, but for the lab, this will do just fine. Hit next and accept the certificate there. And then uh, we specify the vCenter server. Mine are in SSO uh, enhanced link mode, so I need to specify which one I want to connect to. And then we give the site a name, so I'm just going to give it site A, and then an email address. I'm going to leave the local host as the fully qualified domain name for easy identification. And uh, the default extension ID will work just fine as well. So we're going to go for next here, and then we'll review those settings, make sure we're happy, and click finish to complete that configuration. And this will also take a couple of minutes. Okay, now that that has completed, We'll just quickly run through what else is available in the management appliance here. Uh, so we've got a summary and we can see a uh, high-level information about the system. We can look at our disks, our access and certificates. Um, we can update our time settings here. And this is where we do our updates from. There's obviously none available. It's a brand new version. Uh, we can forward our syslogs. And if you're using an array, storage array, for application, we can install the SRA just there as well. 
Okay, so that's the SRM appliance deployed for site A. You need to go and deploy it for site B as well. I won't cover that here because it's exactly the same as what I've just done, but you will need to make sure you change the site name to something like site B and specify your VCS A and site B as well whilst doing the configuration. You obviously need a different IP address and host the name for the SRM appliance too. Okay, so once the second SRM appliance is deployed, we need to pair them together. So we do this by going into um, Home, then Site Recovery on your vCenter server, then go into New Site Pair. In here, we've just selected the first site, which is VCSA1 in our existence. And then we just put the PSC host name of the second site in, which is the same as your vCenter server if running version 7 username and password and then we select the vCenter server at that second site that we want to pair to and uh, your site recovery manager instance and vSphere application if you have that installed I'm just going to accept those security alerts and review the last page and finish to continue Just going to wait for that to finish the pair. It does take a couple of minutes. Okay, once that's done, we can log into the second um, SRM appliance here again through the vSphere client, and we can see that the uh, the map there from VCSA two back to VCSA one, um, and uh, that will of course be from one to two as well if you log into the first VCSA on your other site. And once you've uh, once you've prepared that successfully, we need to um, look at setting up SRM. So we can see our replication servers because we have VSphere replication installed at both sites. And uh, we need to set up our network mappings. Uh, so we can just click New here, and then we we choose we can choose actually the intelligent automatic mapping. So I just map everything in DC in my data center A, data center to B, and it will just work out. Um, what to which networks to map to each other uh, you can do this manually if you've got any concerns but my, my environment's pretty straightforward uh, your test network and um, by default it will do an isolated network for testing and I prefer that so I have left that in there the same thing with your folder mappings so when you do a recovery and you've got a VM in folder a for example it will then you have to tell it which folder to uh, bring that up at during a DR event at the other site. So we, we map them together here and uh, Again, mine are very straightforward in my lab uh, The same with as folders we need to do with the resources. So the cl map your clusters And then we for everything actually remember to do reverse mappings as well so if we were to fail back from uh, your DR site to your primary site then we would need to uh, reverse those mappings so it knows what networks, what compute and what folder to put things back to as well. So it's quite intelligent SRM, it does a lot of orchestration during DR events and also uh, on the recovery back as well. And I'm just going to do my storage policies, even though they're the same at both sites, we, uh, we should do them as, as good practice. Placeholder data stores is where the, uh, the VM um, files are stored. So uh, at each site, you probably want to make a small data store to hold those, and then you just uh, you just set them up here. Then there are a lot of advanced settings. You don't usually need to touch these uh, out of the box unless you've got some problems or some advanced stuff that you need to set up. Then if we go to replications, and if you have Redfeast for replications set up already, um, you can set up a replication session for one of your virtual machines. So I'm just going to show you this here as a test. Um, I'm going to set this virtual machine to replicate across to my other site and um, I've specified the data store there at the other site to replicate the data to and at a 5 minute RPO which is the lowest you can do and then I'm going to create a new protection group to uh, put that virtual machine into and that is basically just a group, you, know, you can put more than one virtual machine into a group to make uh, management of them easier and I'm going to build a new test plan there too as you just saw 
a recovery plan actually but uh, I will run a test uh, on that recovery plan uh, once it's all set itself up so there's a protection group finished and there's the recovery plan finished and uh, if we just go to the replications there we can see the the VM is just replicating and uh, there's no um, sync happened so far it's um, I, th I think that's because the virtual machine might be powered off I know it's powered on yeah that's the SRM copy there at the DR site which we'd expect to see that you can see a slightly different icon there so you know that it's an SRM uh, copy and uh, if you go to try and edit it it'll tell you that it's managed um, by another solution so you don't want to be editing those okay so if we go back to our site recovery and our recovery plan I'm just going to run a test on the default recovery plan you would of course want to modify that I'm not going to send the uh, any changes down I just want to show you that the VM can now be recovered uh, with a single click eff effectively uh, yeah, so you can see the um, the virtual machine down there in the uh, in VCSA two is has been powered on in the tasks and events at the bottom. If you give it a refresh, you can see the top one still powered on because we ran a test, so it won't power anything off. And the the same uh, the one that's been the copy down there is actually being powered on automatically by SRM, and you can see it's been placed into a special network. Uh, these are isolated so they can't communicate with the outside world or any of your other production systems now we can open this up and um, this recovery plan whilst it's running um, and uh, once the once it's finished you'll see a history here of all the, uh, the the attempted recoveries or test recoveries but if we go to recovery steps we can see what's happening during the recovery attempt and uh, here we see the VM is just waiting for VMware tools to start but this VM doesn't have any VMware tools so um, I'm just going to cancel this task before it uh, it fails on us and it'll automatically um, stop for us and then we just hit clean up and that will then remove um, everything from DR which it built during this recovery plan and put it all back to normal and uh, make sure everything is still syncing up just takes a couple of seconds and there we go the recovery plan is back to a ready state ready for recovery again or testing and you can see the history there there's the tests which we had an error on and the uh, we can export these actually to give to your management team it's quite useful and there's there's the system back to how it was before Okay, so that's the end of the SRM 8.3 installation video. Thanks for watching.